Or you have no idea about it. That's why the scripture says we're going to forgive you for your sins known and unknown. See, the Father got you covered. He's trying to cover you because he's going to try to forgive you for your sins known and unknown because he knows that a lot of y'all walking right up into these churches doing these limping dances around the altar, screaming to the Father all day and long, calling yourself sanctified, and all you are is in a sanctuary of ball. He's been around since the longest, man, and he's always setting himself up right next to the Father, trying to make his religion and his belief system just like the Father's. He says that there are people at the top who know about this false God, and they're using him. That's what they do to get you guys off into satanic worship. He says that the one sign likely in this scripture is they'll set Pharaoh off to definitely know that y'all are comparable and y'all are lost and confused is the God that you worship. When he was afraid of y'all and he sent y'all out of there quickly and everybody gave y'all all y'all stuff and y'all left out company by company, he was thinking that you guys were worshiping the real and true father, which everybody knows, including Satan, is the creator. He thought y'all had found him and that made him afraid of you all. And sent you out. Father said, what are we going to do to him? We're going to have y'all circle around a little bit because they know that me, I know what I'm doing. They know I'm purposeful. So they're expecting it to be a straight path. So he can run right behind you as a serpent behind you trying to nip at your heels. That's what they expect. I'm going to have y'all to go around in a circle a little bit. Then I'm going to have y'all to face Baal Perizim, which is the land of where Baal is being worshipped. Baal Perizim, that's, it's got his name. I'm going to have y'all face it. And when Pharaoh sees that, He's going to say, oh, snap, they done went out there to worship Baal, the false god that we set up for Satanism. I know I can get them now. But Jews in Israel, they don't even know that. They're just following the truth of the Lord as a shield and buckler because the Father has taken them into his own hands to educate them. He says, all you got to be still in your eighth lesson of education, all you got to do, all you got to do and your eighth lesson of education is just to be still and know that I'm God. You're going to know later. You'll find out later when you look back on it how nice I was. And you'll be educated then about what it means to be a nation in front of me that I get things done. He says, you're going to go around a circle, and then you're going to face ball per, uh, per, periatha or something. It's got ball in front. And then that when Pharaoh was going to look and say, oh, snap. And this is why you guys in, in the States, as far as I'm concerned, they're all over the world now. They laughing at you, man. Y'all going to church every Sunday, and they like, we got them because they, they're, they're false worshiping, dude. Y'all thinking that y'all going to church, and you dancing and stuff like that. Half of y'all playing. Half of y'all looking for somebody that you want to date or have sex with. You know what I'm saying? Um, man or woman. Man or man or whatever. Some of y'all going there just to sing. Some of y'all going there to crack jokes or pretend like y'all dancing to make a mockery of everybody else. It's everything going on up inside the so-called sanctuary and temple. But Leo told us, so he told us that the truth of the Father, man, that the kingdom of God is within you. It's not inside of a structure that was built even many years back that they had to tear down three times. Christ said the temple can be destroyed and rebuilt in three days, man. It took 13, 14 years to build that thing. That's not it. Y'all still going up in there. And as long as you keep going up in there and doing these things, they're going to look at you the same way Pharaoh looked at the children of Israel. They don't know the truth. I thought that they did because they were saying that they worship the Father. They were saying that they have a new belief system, but they don't know the truth. Now that I actually see that they're facing Baal Periza. And they walked around in a circle. And that's what he's doing to y'all all over the world. He got y'all walking around in a circle facing Baal. He got y'all walking around in a circle facing the Easter Bunny. He got y'all walking around in a circle bowing down to Chris Kringle. And that's his evidence that he can keep on making a mockery of you because you haven't received the wisdom. I'm going to close real soon. Because I got this one last important point to make about education and truth and wisdom. I'm going to close. I've been saying this for a while now, but I want to go ahead and cement it down into this right here, which is our fourth part on education. Is that the truth is important to us, that immutable truth, the wisdom that comes from the Father. I don't want to say more. There's a truth.
there's a truth and there are people that are constantly working against the revelation of that truth to your children and to others. And how they do so, one of the major ways that I see that they've been doing now is that they've got us starting at a different point. If they feel that they can move you away from the truth historically and start you at a different point, then you will never know the beginning. And in that way, they can now say that the truth began here and they can take it from that point and they can lie from you, they can lie to you freely from that point on. I don't know if I said that clearly, but this is what I'm trying to say to you. And I've said this before, is that what we learn and when we talk, that when people speak and they want to say something to you, they want you to regard it as the truth, is you start with the premise. And what I'm saying is that when people are changing the definitions of things, the words, the history of things, is that they're, they know the premise that cannot be defeated that the Father sets. He gives it all to us at the beginning. He says, I'm the beginning and the end, not some other point. So don't start at some other place. Like, don't start with the truth that starts at kindergarten at, you know, um, uh, H.B. Hutton grade school in Alabama. That truth don't start there. The truth doesn't start in Head Start. Over here at so-and-so's learning center, and at three years old, that's not where the truth starts. The father is saying that the truth starts in the beginning with the father who begins to give it to you. And yet, you guys will introduce your children to, perhaps, a good night moon before you introduce them to let there be light. You gonna give your children all the children's books and stuff like that and Dr. Susan, and you're going to put them into the education system, you ain't never, ever sat down and read the Holy Scripture with them. The, the Father is saying, now you, they got you starting at the wrong premise. They got you starting way over here, and so everything after that is based upon a foundation of lies, and they can keep lying to you. But if you start at the beginning with a proper education, which starts with the Word of God, who's the only one who knows the truth, he's the only wise one, and you start that as the foundation and you keep that as the premise and you keep what you learn there as the premise, it's gonna be difficult for them okay. later on to introduce a new premise and a lie to you. You will know. And it's gonna be difficult for them later on for them to introduce a figure to you to tell you things and then present the figure as wise and you say the figure is wise. See? I don't care who you are, whether you are a president of the United States or president of this nation or that. I don't care if you're the greatest singer ever. I don't care if they say that you're a professor at Harvard or the University College of London or Cambridge. I don't care what. I'm not going to look at you as wise if your premise doesn't start with the word of the Father and are able to prove that out through the truth and revelation. You can't be. You're going to tell me something that starts with a different premise somewhere else and you're going to prove it from that premise and try to give it to me as true. But the minute that the premise gets proved wrong, you're going to have to come back and apologize or you're going to move into your cover-up scheme. Now today, they're giving you quotes from every which person. And they're telling you this person is great, this person is wise, you can listen to what they say. But they tell you all sorts of ridiculous things that aren't true. Like this is your purpose, or you can be great at this. And the truth is like this, it's actually relative. They tell you it's okay to worship other gods. They telling you that you can get in contact with God through doing this and this and that. And some of you guys, you. you you worship, you, you're going into this, you, different religions, <clears throat> and then you maybe come into contact with a spirit, and then you say that it's God, or you say that it's your mother who died, because they taught you how to get in contact with that. And then you're taking it as truth, but they started you off from a wrong premise. How do you know that the spirit that you're talking to is not a demon lying to you? 
telling you that my name is this, and this is who I am. How do you know what spirit that you're talking to? What form it has taken? Whether well, it can change its form. How do you know? But you're presuming that you're talking to your mother? What about these other dead spirits and souls walking around here who love to make fun of man and then have jokes and play with y'all? Can't possibly be him or her? Posing as your mom? To lead you into the same death trap? But the Father's truth said, don't you ever communicate with nothing like that. Don't you don't ever do it. Because the Father knows the truth. Eh? I'm closing now. Because on this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, we know that the Christ had come. And he said in three days, we'll bring you back what they had torn down. They couldn't believe that. They know what's up. And they want y'all to be doing the Soul Sunday thing and not understanding that in three days. In fact, what y'all don't even understand is that the day starts in the evening. The day starts in the evening. Y'all hear that? You see what they've done for many centuries as liars and deceit? Listen to the sentence that I just told you. How I'm trying to get an idea across to you guys, and it's hard to do that because the language itself is a lie and a deceit. I just told you that the day starts in the evening. But y'all all understood what I said. I know you did. But how can you understand that? hyperbole. That, that in and of itself is an illogical statement. The day starts in the evening. What? Those are opposites. How can you say that? What I'm trying to tell you is they've given you a lie from the beginning. That thing that you know is the day is the evening. And that thing that you know as the night is the morning. How deep these people are with. What I'm trying to tell you is that, I don't know if you guys can see, it's coming to what we know as the evening because it's like 4 or 5 o'clock p.m. And if you go back to the scriptures, they tell you that the new day starts when the sun goes down. At the setting of the sun is a new day. See that? At the setting of the sun is a new day. That's when the new day began. When the sun set. And they tell you, if you wash and clean yourself when the sun sets, the Father forgives. And our whole culture is based upon the opposite. Everything that we do when we're trying to start over, when we're trying to repent, when we're trying to reform ourselves, we're talking about, well, I'm going to repent in the morning. See that? Easter. I'm going to go Sunday morning and repent. You're late. You're late to church. It says that when the sun went down was your time. Everywhere in the scripture it says that. It says that if you wash in what we know is the morning, when the sun is up, when the sun goes down, the Father will make you clean and start you new. You missed it. What y'all are doing as the sun is going down, y'all getting prepared to go out there and do some debauchery. As the sun goes down, y'all getting prepared to go do debauchery the whole night. And then you say when you wake up, you're going to go to church and you could be made clean. The father says, no, at the end of the close of the day, I'm giving everybody a new start. When does the new start begin then? At the close of the day that you just had. And y'all keep starting the day off, which you saying the night, wrongfully. <coughs> so they got you. Because when you're waking back up at about 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., you're already halfway through your day. 
and you done started it off with a bunch of sin. So they preaching, and I guarantee you, somebody going to get up there and say, and Jesus woke up early Sunday morning. Right here in what we just read, it says that the Father followed him in the cloud. And in the midst of what we know as the night, which, oddly enough in the scripture, they call it the dawn. In the midst of what we know as the night, the Father had decreed that Egypt was done and overtaken. Boom. And they said before the light came up, the Father parted the sea before. He started his work and what we know is the night. Teaching y'all about the truth now, man. What we know is the night, the Father came with the east wind and opened up the whole sea. Before it was light outside, the children of Israel walked across. Then Pharaoh them came after and as it became light at the breaking of dawn, he washed them boys away and drowned them. It was all complete by the time you guys are waking up. Rip Van Winkle. By the time you guys are waking up, man, the Father has already completed it. This one, when y'all go to church on Sunday, man, know this. By the time the sun set, the Father already proclaimed and already had the victory in hand. It's already done. And on Saturday, what we know as Saturday evening, do understand that the victory has already been celebrated. Father has given us Messiah and told us the reason why I'm giving you that and that the concept of the Christ which is the greatest individual that will ever live that will come for the salvation of mankind. That, intro, that, that, that person has been introduced in the Bible and it's solidified. The, also the concept of Messiah is also solidified in the Bible that, that the Father has given us the truth that that concept is one and the same. That the Christ is the Messiah. And he's telling you that the power is in the truth of the teaching. That being the case, he gives us this lesson. Take the education of your children, like I took the education of my children, into my own hands. I'm not trusting nobody else with that. And the place to start is with my word. And so when he came to clarify and save us, it's all in the family. He's not sending us off somewhere else. So he's not, you're not going up into Sunday school in the basement of the Temple of Baal to tell your children about the Easter Bunny and to give out Easter eggs to your kids and have them run around and look for eggs. When the lying, deceitful, satanic, ball worshiping, specialized in lying deceit have given it to you and said, to look for the Christ is the same thing as searching for these colorful eggs. And every kid that touches one is trained to think that this egg is looking so colorful that it's probably going to be different than these other eggs. But when you crack it open, it's the same old egg inside. And if it's been sitting so long, it's going to be rotten anyway. And the kid is filled with nothing but disappointment because he's saying on the outside it's so colorful. When I crack this egg, maybe it's going to be a chocolate or a candy inside. But when he crack it, it's still the same old boiled egg he's been getting for lunch every day. And they're saying that your search for Christ is like that. 
You're looking for something that's bright and colorful, it's going to be awesome. But what we tell you is, there's really no Christ. It's all a bunch of lies, because when you crack it open, we're all the same inside. Rotten eggs. We're all yellow, green eggs inside. That's all. And what we're going to do, since we know that, in fact, we told a lot to the kids the whole time, and kids are expressing their disappointment, like I done collected 50 eggs. When I cracked the first one open, I saw the same white thing that's inside the other eggs that we boiled yesterday, Ma. I done collected 50 of them. What are we supposed to do with these eggs? I'm supposed to eat 50 eggs today? Instead of the church standing up for the truth and abolishing the stupid thing, they're going to go out and get you plastic eggs now and put some candy inside. Now, how ridiculous does that sound? That you're going to have a bunny that can't even, that's going to lay an egg even though it's a mammal? But it's going to be a colorful egg, but then on the inside it's going to be like a regular little no. regular egg that comes out of a chicken egg that I know is a chicken egg. But now, even at least those was two live animals, but this one, what I'm about to tell you, <laughs> is that now the Easter Bunny can lay plastic eggs with chocolate inside? Truth starts with the Father, man, and it's immutable. And those who follow the truth are the only ones that are wise. And everybody else is a liar and deceit. Just know that. And that's unequivocal. And those who come in the name of truth and come with the word of the Father, they're to be called those teachers and Messiah who stand up for righteousness. Let's educate our children for nation building. In the name of the Father, the only source of wisdom and truth. In the name of the Son, and no sons, those true messiahs who sit down to be able to teach unto the children righteousness and the Father's glory and His truth. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.